Thunderbolt 4 versus Thunderbolt 5, what's the actual difference? So when we're looking at the data bandwidth on transfer, then Thunderbolt 4 is 40 gigabits per second, but Thunderbolt 5 is 80 gigabits per second, but it can boost to 120 gigabits per second, which means that if you've got large displays, for example, and you want to send data out and you don't need to get any data back, you can kind of steal some of the getting data back lanes out of the 80 and push them to the sending so you can send or receive kind of 120 gigabits per second kind of boost bandwidth, which is really clever. Not necessarily always 120 gigabytes per second, if that makes sense. Now the PCIe lane speed has been upgraded from PCI Gen 3X4 to PCI Gen 4X4. Display output, a massive thing. Now, previously it was one 8K display at 60 Hertz or two 4K at 60 Hertz. Now we have two 8K at 60 Hertz or three 4K at 144 Hertz. The display port version was 1.4, now it's 2.1. The power delivery is up to 100 watts for Thunderbolt 4, but on Thunderbolt 5 up to 240 watts. And in essence, these are the basic differences of Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 5. So you might be checking out some of the new stuff that's coming out and everyone's talking about like Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 5, Docs, and you know, WWDC, there's other things Apple's announcing and talking about Thunderbolt 5, more expansions, Thunderbolt 5, did I mention Thunderbolt 5 already? And you're wondering, is that worth it? Well, here's my video why I'm not upgrading the Thunderbolt 5. What? and how I'm using still a Thunderbolt 4 dock. And I'm gonna show you what I've got plugged in, some of the things I'm using. Perhaps you get some tips. Oh, actually, I didn't know I might wanna use this as well. And then I'm gonna give you 10 reasons why I personally decided that I'm not gonna go for Thunderbolt 5, even though I have fully supported Thunderbolt 5 device that could support Thunderbolt 5. I'm not gonna do it. And perhaps you don't wanna do it either. I've got good news for you. Don't you love it when you get paid for spreading the good news? It's about Intel Core Ultra 7265K. It has had a very attractive price reduction, making it a great cost-effective and high-performance solution for creators, gamers, and professionals. If you're into video editing, then this is especially good news for you because of the iGPU inside there that will enable you to have hardware acceleration, media playback, and encoding on the timeline, which means you'll have very smooth timeline experience with your H.264 and 5 media, regardless of which dedicated GPU you're running on your PC. Oh, and now with the boost profile, you can get extra performance and the native memory support goes up to 8,400 mega transfers per second. It's a perfect best bang for buck CPU for creators, whether you're doing photo, video, 3D, AI. Check it out in the video description below and thank you Intel for sponsoring this part of the video. Now, another way of seeing this video is perhaps my six plus month review of the iVanky Fusion Dock Max One Thunderbolt 4 Dock because I've been using it every single day. Lots of things. I've added lots of things. I've basically maxed out this one. I want to dive a little bit deeper in how I've been using this iVanky uh, Dock and how what I have got plugged in here. So just so you've got an idea that I'm not just kind of you know plug a few things in, making the video. Ooh la la. I've actually used lots of these things over the six months and really tried to make this into my workflow. So I want to start from the back so you can really see what I've plugged in into back of the device. It's got so many different parts and if you want to really dive deeper into what all the different parts can do, I've got a full video that you know I've got on the channel, go check that one out where we actually set this up and so on. On the bottom here we've got obviously the power, a brick that's plugged into this that supports power for my MacBook Pro M4 Max that you can see a little bit out of the frame, I'll show you this in a minute. Then the next row I have two USB-C cables, that's the cable that actually comes with the dock and that's connected to the MacBook that's just on the side. Because the dock has dual Thunderbolt 4 controllers which is very very unique and you don't really get that with most of them if maybe there are some out there but most of them you know they don't they have a single one but here because we connect two cables we actually get double the bandwidth to everything as well if that makes sense so these two are for that then above that i have two other usb-c cables one of them is connected to my qnap usb4 to 10 gigabit ethernet pod because I stopped using the 2.5 gigabit in the back there and I'm using 10 gigabit because uh, I have that accessory. And then the other one is connected on this side. You can see I've got my Blackmagic ATEM Mini 
and that's connected to this one because when we're off to doing live streaming or if I'm recording some of the other computers and things like that, I'm recording through that and that's connected to that iVanky in here through these. Then two display outputs for monitors. I've got one 4K monitor, 32 inch in there, and then another 27 inch on the side portrait laying on the side there for different things because I like lots of the screen real estate. So I can, when I'm live streaming, for example, I can see my OBS in there and then other bits in there and when I'm editing just you know lots of screw real estate then I've got another new um, uh, addition into here this is a fractal scape headset a dock that's connected to this one on the other side here as you can see that dock goes into the back there so when I'm, I'm just pulling these out it can just charge them wirelessly if I just leave them into there so they're always connected always on and then that's the MacBook Pro M4 Max with 128 gigabytes in there and you can see on the side here the MacBook's got this special cable connected that runs into the back in there and then finally on the top I've got this uh, dongle connected for the fractal scape headset so that sends really low latency and very high quality uh, audio straight from this dongle so I don't have to connect it over Bluetooth so it's always connected very very fast and then I've got a few extra ports that are kind of free on the back so then on the front what ports I'm constantly using SD card readers I'm using them all the time I'm using these Kingston um, Canva cards the v60 and v90 cards super fast and because of the 10 gigabit ethernet I can transfer them to my NAS very very fast through these and then the micro SD cards there as well for using this Osmo Pocket 3 all the time I haven't used the headphone combo jack a lot because i am just got everything connected wirelessly. Then the front USB-C port, I'm using a ton of them, using them all the time. I've got my external M.2 SSD enclosures here because the main camera is recording everything onto these. So I've got multiple of these, so these get connected there and then transferred to my NAS again. Then there is this permanently living Rode Wireless Pro that's connected into there and usually I also installed these magnets on the bottom there because I've got this like little laptop dock on the side there just outside the frame so this kind of magnetically just stays in there so whenever I'm done recording as you can see lap lap lapel in there this I'm popping back into there and then I can literally get all of my data straight away I can see it on the computer and I can transfer it across to the NAS or wherever I want this. So this permanently is there. So I know that whenever I'm starting shooting, everything is charged. First of all, I don't need to recharge them because it's already charging. And the charging and the connection of data happens through the same cable. So this permanently lives there. Super, super happy. Then another a really, really nice addition that I've started to use lately is this Rode a wireless micro. So I've got the receiver constantly plugged into there and whenever I'm doing video calls or client meetings or something like that instead of bringing up any other microphone I'm just using this one and this is really really high quality microphone very very affordable I'm going to leave the link in the description below and actually I was a little bit underwhelmed by this at first but then after using it a bit I was like oh my goodness this is really good and I've got some of the clients who I talked to I said can you tell me which one sounds better and I use like the Apple AirPods Max included microphones or some the Rode Wireless Pro ones I said okay let's try this one but then this one just works so so well so whenever I'm having video call I just pick up this put it on my shirt somewhere there's either magnets or it can just clip on both of them and then it's really really high quality audio and the receiver is there so I don't have any wires tangling with me I've got a wireless headset and a wireless, wireless microphone so I don't have any weird microphones like that coming across or something like that it's really nice you can get it in white and black if you want to check it out fun fact MKBHD with his autofocus channel is also using them check out on his shirt you can see road on this obviously he's using the black version but he has i've noticed that he's used different like hollyland and um other makes that produce these small microphones is ended up with road unless it changes again but right now what i'm seeing he's using that one so for that price point one of the best microphones you can get and as you can see i've got a few more extra ports in there for anything else that i might need i've got um, i want to leave the front actually just free so that most of the things that, that i need are plugged into the back so the front are kind of loose so the reasons why i'm not going to be upgrading from this thunderbolt 4 dock to thunderbolt 5 number one 
price. Have you seen the price of Thunderbolt 5 docks? It's absolutely insane. One of the ones that I'm seeing or looking out there is the CalDigit TS5 Plus. In the end of the video, I'll show you because for some people, you might want to go with that one, but that costs $500, $499. This Fusion Dock Max 1 right now is costing $359.99. And I believe that is not even the deal price. So go check out the latest pricing. That is 40% cheaper. The alternative Thunderbolt 5s for something similar will cost 40% more. Number two, power delivery. As much as Thunderbolt 5 can give you up to 240 watts power delivery, I can't actually do anything with it. The MacBook M4 Max that I'm using there can charge up to 140 watts, kind of wasted power in there. But this one here offers up to 96 watts power delivery. So it's not the fastest charging, but at the same time, it's always full. And whenever I'm using this dock, I don't need the laptop to charge super, super fast. In fact, I perhaps want it to charge slow. And this laptop most of the time is plugged in anyway there. To charge that so much faster, it's kind of waste for me and I don't really need it. Do you? Number three, external monitor support. And this is gonna be a big one for probably a lot of people. Oh wow, I'm gonna get these massive 8K external monitors and so on. There are a few things that you need to know before doing that because you might actually get fooled. Even though Thunderbolt 5 can support, you know, two 8K monitors at 60 hertz per second, the thing is, Apple kind of is pulling on your leg, even though they say that they've got Thunderbolt 5 ports and they've got three of them. And as far as I know, they're three separate Thunderbolt 5 controllers, so they're not sharing bandwidth between neither of them. Apple still offers you two external displays via dock rather than three, what the Thunderbolt 4 actually gives you they are limiting what single pod can do for you. So if you want three external monitors, whether 4K or 8K, you're gonna have to plug one of them into your Mac anyway. So the dock doesn't really help you. So if you want external displays, just don't buy the dock, just plug it onto your MacBook. So that's a little bit of a downside. Also, depending which chip you have inside your MacBook, M4, M4 Pro, M4 Max, they all support different amount of external monitors, different resolutions and different hertz and so on. So make sure that the one that you're using actually supports what Thunderbolt 5 supports. Number four, Thunderbolt 5 support on your hardware. Now, make sure that your hardware, the main PC or Mac, actually supports Thunderbolt 5. Because if you built yourself amazing AMD gaming PC, you don't actually have Thunderbolt 5. Maybe it's not a gaming PC, it's a great PC. Thunderbolt 5 is not actually supported everywhere. You've got limited devices that actually support that. Intel's latest Core Ultra series do do that, and then Apple does that. Other than that, it's kind of a cricket show. Number five, SD card read speeds. So no matter how much SD cards I have, there is no more SD card slots on the Thunderbolt 5 port. So I can't plug more of them in there. There's still one SD and one micro SD. And there's no type B or A CF Express cards that I could, you know, just pop into the dock. You still have to have extra card readers or something like that. So that doesn't offer me anything extra. So the cards or anything I'm using right now, I'm not gonna get faster speeds. It's just gonna be the same. The number six is ports. As you can see, I haven't even run out of the ports on this Thunderbolt 4 dock. And this is not kind of the maxed out version. Uh, sometimes I've got even more th stuff installed here when I'm plugging in something else or moving things. But do I need more ports? Honestly, right now I don't. This is more than enough for me what I need. Number seven, external GPU support. Here's the thing, the funny thing about Thunderbolt 5. If you got a laptop, there's two options that support Thunderbolt 5. You either got Intel Core Ultra Series based laptop, or you've got a MacBook that supports Thunderbolt 5. Or the third option is you've got a PC that you've built with Core Ultra Series, right? They all support Thunderbolt 5. The external GPU support is kind of useless to me. I'm using the Mac. So the external Thunderbolt 5 eGPU support for that, Apple says, mm -mm, no, not on us. You're gonna have to use the GPU that's inside there. So that doesn't give me any performance. That might be you as well. Secondly, if you've got an actual desktop and you've got Core Ultra series, you know, 285K, for example, Ultra 9, or the 265K, the video sponsor for this one, and remember earlier part of this, very affordable, by the way. If you've got that PC built, 
here's the thing. In that case, going with an external eGPU doesn't make any sense. Just buy an internal one, it's cheaper and kind of more straightforward. So it doesn't make really sense. The only time the eGPU makes sense if you've got a Windows-based laptop that doesn't have a dedicated GPU and you have Core Ultra Series so you can actually have an external GPU that's a little bit faster. Other than that, I'm kind of like, it doesn't make sense. Number eight, SSD performance. This is kind of 50-50 where I'm at. Right now, the way I'm using my dock is I'm using the internal storage as much of I need on the Mac. And most of the time when I'm reviewing footage, projects or in editing something, it's all connected to the NAS via 10 gigabit ethernet. And at that point, I don't really need external storage fast speed with Thunderbolt 5. Do you remember the video where I showed you how you can get actually MacBook internal SSD speeds outside? Go check that one out if you haven't seen that one yet. I'll leave the link in the description below. So if you require that, you can do that. But whenever I need that, I find that I need that on the go. So when I'm already out, I'm taking the laptop and I'm editing somewhere outside, then I don't need the dock anyway but I just have the Thunderbolt 5 SSD. And then whenever I'm internally here, I can just plug the Thunderbolt 5 SSD into directly to the Mac because I've got an extra Thunderbolt 5 port free in there, which means that I get the speeds anyway. So having a Thunderbolt 5 dock that gives me extra Thunderbolt 5 ports for the SSD speeds kind of doesn't make sense for me. Do you see what I mean? Maybe that's you as well. And if you want to plug the Thunderbolt 5 into the Thunderbolt 4, kind of dock anyway, you're going to get 3,500 plus megabytes per second, somewhere around their speed, which is plenty fast for any of your data transfers, unless you're doing some 8K editing, but I think that's not most of you. Number nine, larger. The Thunderbolt 5 docks are actually larger because they dissipate more heat. They require a little bit more energy, so they're going to have to be larger. And I don't want something larger on my desk, so this is kind of fine. And number 10, the price, the reason that we started with number one and 10, they're the same really. Cause I need a 10, you know, nine, it's not really good. Having a 10 is, is better, but it's a big point. Something like this that does 99.9% .9 what I do at 40% less is, is a huge thing for me. I don't know about you, but uh, money doesn't grow on trees for me. Uh, I'm going to have to work hard for it. And I'd rather spend it on something else that makes me money rather than this or saves me time or something like that. Is that you as well? Because for the price point, I'm super happy with the iVanki. And now let's conclude with a little bit of a review of my six months usage. Have I had any issues? I've had surprisingly little issues with it. The only issue that I could actually tell you is sometimes when I've got way too many things plugged in, my main 4K monitor has gone black for a split second and that's it. That's the only issue that I've had. And I haven't figured out really like what exactly causes that or which combination this is. But other than that, it just works every single time. Now, I know that this is not like the cheapest dock out there, but honestly, the more I use it, the more I can recommend it. And if you're asking for my two you know, cents for this, I think this is a great product. If you want to go with a different dock or something else out there, feel free. And these 10 reasons for going with Thunderbolt 5 versus Thunderbolt 4 still apply. Regardless, I think this is a really good, great option uh, that has two Thunderbolt 4 chips inside to actually support all the bandwidth of all the ports and stuff like that. Because there are some of the other ones that offer you the ports, but there are one or the other. If you use both of them, it's kind of goes, mm -mm, it doesn't support. But here, everything works, plug everything in. It's just amazing. But I want to put myself in the shoes of someone maybe needing a dock for the first time. There are some recommendations that I would give you if you need 10 gigabit ethernet. Then I think you might want to look into the Thunderbolt 5 docks. There are not many out there, but if you do require 10 gigabit ethernet, this iVanki unfortunately doesn't offer that. It's only 2.5 gigabit. And I found that in my workflow, that was a little bit too slow. The fly file transfers was way too slow when, when we did that. So having a four times faster speed was incre incredible upgrade. Now you can just buy the QNAP external USB 4 to a 10 gigabit ethernet adapter, but that's just an extra thing that kind of dongles around and you know, takes up space. That is the only thing that make me consider the Thunderbolt 5. But because I've got already this set up here ready, I don't see the reason why I should, I don't know, get rid of this or sell it to spend extra $500 to just get 10 gigabit ethernet. But if you're doing it in the first place and perhaps you need 10 gigabit ethernet, going with a Thunderbolt 5 dock 
it, it might actually make sense for you. So I get it at that point. Do you know what I mean? Apart from that, you want to check out this or what I'm using. I'm going to leave the links, everything in the description below. Go check them out. They're affiliate links. So I get small commission, at no extra cost to you. Thank you very much if you choose to do that. And if you want to reach out, I'll always get back to my Minec messages. Build yourself a PC through one of the build guides in the description below, completely free. God bless and goodbye.